maybe you don't pay attention to. How many of us wake up in the morning sometimes and enjoy the beauty of the great Mount Rainier that is just 50 miles behind us here. What a beautiful sight. I said that it might know that we live in a state that is filled with beautiful and hugely majestic mountains. Uh, Mount Rainier is less than 50 miles, 100 miles to us here. Mount Baker to the north is the same. Uh, and this winter I was in Paradise Camp uh, on the top of Mount Rainier. The place up from where you can go nowhere else. The only way you can go after the Paradise Camp is on your leg with your snowshoe. At Paradise Camp, plant seeds. You don't see plants again. All you see is snow and rock. It is majestic. It is beautiful. All you can say, all I could say at least as I stood in the places, how great you are. I look at those three peaks and the, it, it was, it was, it was like I am here. What are you going to do about it was like, it was like challenging you. It was like, I, I have been here before you are here. I am here after you are gone. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that is just Montreal. Just Montreal. Montreal. <laughs> but there's a mountain to which you and myself has been invited. Who shall ascend unto the mountain of the house of the Lord? Who shall go into his holy place? It, Mount Rainier is so majestic. I mean, I stood in that base camp and I saw young men and women who were willing to dare an ascent on top of the mountain. And as they appear, I saw that they were not, these were not unserious people. These were people who knew that when they face that mountain, it may be their end. Actually, this winter, <coughs> four people were caught in a blizzard on that mountain and they did not come down. When we approach God, there's a tendency for us to look at him and say, oh, he's my friend. God of miracle. Now my brother. <laughs> he's an awesome God. He's a mighty king. He's a glorious one. He's a Can somebody have me shift this, this speaker? Is the El Elyon of Israel. <coughs> that mic is the one feeding back. Is it clogged? No, it's not working. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Let's take him serious. Can you say that to that? Amen. You know, but the prophets and the psalmists, they describe this mountain of the house of the Lord. And it was in Genesis chapter 12 that the word mountain was first used in the scriptures. Genesis chapter 12. After God has blessed Abraham, and God has proven to him that no Canaanite will be able to stop him. Then he confronted him with a mountain. And the Bible said <laughs> that Abraham passed through the land onto the place of Sikhem, onto the plain of Mori. Abraham passed through the land. Abraham passed through the land. Let me ask you a question. Who would like to meet God? You like to meet God? 
right? If you meet God physically, let's say this morning as we share the word of God, God happens to show his face in this place and said, touch my hand. Right? The same way he showed his face to Thomas. What will you do to that place? Answer my question. Wrong. He came to bless you. He's not coming as a uh, fire on the mountain. He came to bless you. Right? And he says, Kennedy, I bless you. I bless you. He didn't come as a fearful one. He came as a loving one, right? He came as a history maker. He didn't came, come as a history changer. You know, when he comes as a history changer, then he comes as a warrior. But when he comes as a history maker, he comes as a father, the nurturer. So here he has come. And can you teach the one he has chosen to visit? Come and help us. Okay. Why did you leave your Bible? <laughs> it's okay. So God has come to visit Kenichi. He says, My daughter. My daughter. Okay. He said, I will speak mouth to mouth, right? So you and him, you are now talking. Hello, Kenichi. Hello. My name is God. <laughs> Hello, God. <laughs> oh, he has wow. placed you at ease. And then he told you about your children. But you don't have children yet. You wear the same shoes that Abraham was. Did he have children in Genesis chapter 12? He told you about your children. He told you that they are going to be a great nation. That one day still but still Bama is going to say okay, no, can take over. <laughs> right? And all your enemies will be in trouble because he is going to fight them himself. He just told you all of that. Wow. Wow. <laughs> you feel wow, right? What do you do to the chair that you are sitting on when you are visiting? Normally I would keep it. Uh, I would keep it somewhere. You will keep the chair somewhere. What do you do to the building if you have the capacity to do something to it? I would buy it. You will buy the building. If I had the capacity. If you have the capacity to. And you have the capacity. In this instance, Abraham had the capacity, right? Yes. I would buy it. He should buy it. Thank you, Abraham. You can buy the city too now. You can buy the city. <laughs> if you have the capacity, you will buy the city, right? But what did Abraham do? Let's leave the aspect of the day. Let's take the other aspect. Abraham moved God. Abraham passed through. Wow! He didn't build a court around that center. The Bible says Abraham passed through. He didn't, even though he built an altar, he didn't try, start creating the Abrahamic Sikhemite interaction. Ministries International. He didn't try to do that. He passed through. He passed